Hello guys, in this video we'll discuss anti-patterns in Rust you must avoid. So anti-pattern is a commonly used process, structure or pattern of action that despite initially appearing to be appropriate and effective response to a problem or a solution to a problem has more bad consequences than the good ones. And we all use these anti-patterns while we work with Rust programming language. In this video we'll discuss top 5 anti-patterns that you must avoid while programming Rust. We'll also discuss the alternate approaches that we can take to better program our applications using Rust programming language, which will not just help you write Rust like a pro, but helps you become a better Rust developer and write efficient applications. So make sure you stick around and watch till the end and then avoid these anti-patterns and apply the solutions that we'll be discussing to become a Rust pro. So let's begin. First of all, let's talk about unwrap excessively, the first anti-pattern. So let's try to understand this with a problem, in which case we use unwrap and it becomes an anti-pattern and what are the possible solutions. So consider this basic function that we have. Uh, we pass an input and we get an option type in the output and the condition or the business logic here is pretty simple, but in how many case? In our projects dependencies libraries that we consume return an option output and the way we consume it is just like check we pass a uh, two let's say and we unwrap because without unwrap it's returning the option string and quickly just i want to unwrap and get on with it by printing or using it so let's run this to better understand the problem so we do cargo run and in this case it returns uh, input is good but let's say what if I pass 12 and as you can see the program panicked and the application crashed now this is a very basic case and unwrap we all use it day in day out whenever we are programming and rust be it a simple application or a complex application we all do it now as you can see the application just crashed panicked and all we have is that stack trace the trace that is printed from our panic to uh, understand and if you don't have a good logging or monitoring it's gone you don't know why the application is crashing and imagine you are using this at like thousand different places in your code or hundreds of different places in your code it's very difficult to understand from where the problem is coming so in that case using unwrap is basically an anti-pattern and we should not do it and it doesn't also look good uh, when you raise an MR as a Rust developer using unwrap all over your code. So let's try to understand now the solutions. Now there are multiple solutions that we can use instead of unwrap. We can just do unwrap or default. This will just default to the default value of the type. So let's open our terminal. We run the same code. As you can see, it prints an empty string which is fine, which is better than crashing the entire application. Similarly, we have another one, which is unwrap or, and here we can add our own custom default. So let's say in my case, the default is bad input. And we run the same application again. There you go, bad input instead of crashing again. But if we could provide the good input, it just works as usual. Similarly, if we just want to do a bit more than just you know uh, setting the default then we can use unwrap or else and here we can have a closure so let's say the output that I want to return is still bad input and with this I want to also log it so in this case let's say we just print bad input detected and we can perform different operation as well but or call a different function let's say instead of check maybe call a different function that returns the output in case of check fails and now we run this as you can see it prints bad input was detected and bad input so basically these are all the different solutions that we can use instead of just uh, you know unwrapping it doesn't look good and using this way unwrap or else or unwrap or default unwrap or basically make sure our application does not panic does not crash and we are not you know scratching our hairs heads 
to you know fix these problems which are difficult to fix so let me know in the comment if you use this entry pattern now there can be tons of different ways we can use like uh there are different like map or uh so we can use that as well but remember to avoid unwrap uh, whenever you next raise an mr in your project for uh rust programming language so i hope you understood unwrap excessively that we do now let's talk about ignoring uh, result types let's try to understand this with a very basic example which you all would be relating to because we all do this mistake over and over again so what we do is let's say we are reading a file we just do file open and pass whatever path we have so let's say xyz.png and as you can see open returns a result of file and what we do is same as the first case we unwrap excessively in this case basically we are ignoring the result types and we just do unwrap and we get on with the things now this will be fine when we have a good file when we have a happy path where the file exists but in case of a scenario where we don't have the file it is path we run this and as you can see the application crashes because we are ignoring the result type so what we can do in is basically instead of doing like this we can just do match file and if it's a okay file in that case let's say uh, here we just print okay file and if it's an error then we print error opening file and we just respect the result type and we run the same application as you can see it just prints error opening file and if we had other code that was like following this it would have executed but instead of ignoring the result that's very bad practice and we should avoid that anti pattern now let's discuss the third example third uh, anti pattern which is unnecessary cloning let's try to understand unnecessary cloning with a very basic example now this might look very easy but trust me 99% of the people who are new to rust have seen their work and they just do this completely wrong so it's a very important concept to understand and i'll show you guys how quickly you can overuse your memory and increase your cloud bills at times so this is a pretty simple example and if you are someone new to rust trust me this would help you a lot so let's say if we have x as hello and we do y is equals to x now let's say you are coming from those programming languages like java c sharp js python you name it there when you do y is equals to x you are just giving the same value to y which is the value of x but in this case in case of rust when you do y is equal to x you are moving the ownership of hello from x to y so now hello is owned by y after this line it's no no longer owned by x so x has nothing to own and it's gone right if you don't understand ownership and borrowing there should be some videos popping on right top in detail i've explained this concept click it watch it before moving on to this now let's say i open the terminal and i run this i get an error from the rust compiler saying me hey you made these mistakes but it also gives me a solution to clone it and being a newbie to rust if i just clone it and i open the terminal rerun and it works i just push but that's not the case you just increase the memory now you have two variables in the memory x and y having value hello and hello but this clone is unnecessary you don't need it because you are just printing that's all you are doing here so what's the solution so instead of cloning since all you are doing is just printing give the immutable reference and now go ahead and run this it works and what you avoid is extra memory and you just give the immutable reference and it works as it is but let's say you have a use case where you want to modify y so we can just do y string 
from and let's say we change it to hello world now we would require to make x mutable and now y has a mutable reference of x so we can change it and let's run this so we open our terminal and we run this as you can see first x is hello and then y is hello world but what if we try to print x after we change y now as you can see x is also modified if you have such case that's the only case that you should be using clone otherwise if this is your case where you want to use uh, just y after you modify it and you don't need the original value of x then you can use it and if you don't want to modify then we just discussed the immutable reference or boring so that's how you can use it but instead if you want to you know modify y but you want x to be uh, same in that case you can uh, clone that's the only case you need cloning otherwise all the other cases you are doing cloning is completely unnecessary so let's now try to understand the next one which is unnecessary indirection that's also a very interesting concept now let's try to understand unnecessary indirection anti-pattern which is a very basic example so we all have functions or methods where we pass string the on string and we just print it and you know doesn't mutate it just you know use it and here we have our own string we pass it now as you can see for using this method I always need a on string if I want to use slice type so let's say I pass hello from slice type I cannot because it's not expecting slice type it's expecting an on string so I have to do two on for this to work in state of expecting the on string what i can do is just change it to and str the slice type and now if i pass this it works if i pass hello it works so basically that is unnecessary in direction that we don't need we don't need on types here we can just pass the slice type and work with it and we can print it use it whatever we want to do but as you guys can see it's as easy as that to you know mess up with uh, types in rust so make sure you don't use this anti pattern and it works but again the bad consequences are we can only pass always on types not the slice types so let's look at the last one which is one of the favorites that i have which is not using defaults or default trait now let's talk about not using default anti-pattern that we all do all the time in rust but we don't even realize so let's say we have a struct config with width height and full screen and we impul and add a new width config with width as 800 height as 600 full screen as false but is it literally adding the new like let's say i want to add a new one but i want the new with the value uh, width as 200 height as 600 full screen as false true but i cannot set these values right now because i cannot pass for that we now need a different function which we utilized here new for default so instead what we can do is we remove this and we just derive debug for printing and default and now in config we get something which is default and then we go ahead and print it and we run our application as you can see it sets to default of types like you uh, like u32 u32 and boolean it sets to default of types which are 0 0 and false this is what default is instead of setting in the new new should be used when we want user to pass maybe a builder or maybe uh, values separately but let's say even in the case of default we want to have custom implementation for default then we can do is impl default for config 
and here we can implement this mem member and let's say we want to set defaults by ourselves so config and here we can set width to let's say zero height to zero but let's say instead of full screen to false we want to set full screen to true and now if we run this let's add debug for printing and we run this there you go so instead of using new use default which is a proper way and as you can see looking at this code it looks like it's coded by someone who is experienced with rust and not a newbie so this is all for this video i hope you guys understand all of these anti patterns and let's try to avoid all of these while we program even i do sometimes use unwrap excessively or uh, use unnecessary redirection and not using defaults which you must have seen in my videos but let's improve together and program rust like a pro so that's it for this video guys i hope you guys understand and learn lots of things if you do like the video share with your friends i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye